what's an electronic valve? Well, I'm glad you asked. Actually, that's one. And for many years they've been used in radios, amplifiers and television sets, and they act as gateways for electrons. They control the flow of electrons. These days, lots of electronic components have inside them silicon chips or microprocessors, and here's one here. It's not the whole thing that you can see, but it's that tiny little rectangle through the window. In fact, it's smaller than my smallest fingernail, even smaller than my smallest toenail, and it's equivalent to not one of those valves, but about 10,000 of them. It does the job of 10,000 valves or gateways. It does it more efficiently, it's cheaper, and it consumes much, much less energy. And in a computer, there are many of those microprocessors or silicon chips. Here they are here, inside this personal computer or microcomputer. Many of those, and they help the computer to do many clever things and also to have a very good memory. I'll put the lid back on it and maybe we can get it to demonstrate some of the things that it can do for us. Now a computer can do all sorts of mathematical calculations, but it can also play games with us as well. For that, we may have to give it some extra information. Now you know that a cassette tape can contain information on that magnetic strip of tape down there, and in fact it can put music through your amplifier. Well, in very much the same way, this disc inside the little packet is called a floppy disk or a diskette, and that has information for the computer's memory. To put that in to the memory, all I do is slide the diskette into this little box, which is called a disk drive, push down that little tab there, and switch the computer on, and we hear all sorts of buzzes and clicks and beeps. A red light appears on the disk drive, and after a few seconds it goes off, and it means all the information has gone into the computer, and it's ready to play. Now, what can we play with the computer? Well, if I type the word catalog, C-A-T-A-L-O-G, and now a cable goes from the computer around to this television set here, and when I press the return button, up will come our catalog. And it gives us a whole list of games and other things that we can do with the computer. Now, there's one down here called Color Demo Soft. Let's have a look at that one. To see it, we type a very special word that many, many computers understand, and you understand it as well. It's simply this word. It starts with an R, it has three letters, and it's R-U-N. That means get ready to go. Now, I want that one called Color Demo Soft, which is C-O-L-O-R. You've noticed that this computer spells English words in the American way. Then a space, and then D-E-M-O-S-O-F-T. Return and up comes what's called a menu, which is a list of things that we can choose from, all to do with colour. Now, if I want to know the standard colour names, number one. I type number one and return. There they are, all the colours that you can use if you're going to draw pictures with the computer. There's another one uh, that's called kaleidoscope. That's number three. Let's have a look at that one. Three and then return, and the computer draws for us a whole random array of colours. It's a kaleidoscope. Well, the computer's showing us some of its tricks. Let's see if we can interact with the computer. I'm going to play a game with it called Little Brickout. First of all, it wants me to type my name in. So I'll type it in, D-E-A-N-E. -E. And now it gets ready to play this game. There it is. It's a brick wall consisting of red and green bricks. I have a paddle that I can move up and down, that yellow thing on the left, with this hand control. When I press the button on the side, it'll start by firing a ball out, and I can, I can try and hit it back at the wall to knock bricks out and see if I can knock a hole right through the wall. There's another ball coming out in a moment. Where will it go? There it is. Got that one back all right, and that one. And I missed that one. I have five balls here to hit back at the wall. Where will the next one come from? There it is. And I can go on playing this for hours or minutes or maybe only seconds if it beats me. That's just one of the many hundreds of games that you can play with microcomputers, the many microcomputers that are available today.